Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. Guns arrived today. Um, this one is from Range Right, and it is a Sabati. But other than that, I don't know anything about it really. It's quite a few years since I've done a review on a Sabati. I've never done a video review on a Sabati. That dates back to the uh, when I was just writing for magazines. But this one, I don't think I'll be reviewing this on my channel. I think this one will be getting reviewed on Gunmart TV. So I'll leave a link up for that and the review will appear probably in, uh, in, a, in a month or so, I would expect. But let's have a look and see what this is. So it's a Sabati Rover Varmint. It's a 308 Winchester and other than that, I don't think the box is telling me much there. 61, so I'm thinking that might be a 61 centimeter barrel perhaps question is can I get this out of this box neatly or not? Right, I probably fast forwarded through all that bit because it was a bit of a butchery job. Put the knife out of the way now. So here we are, let's have a look and see what we've got. I'm seeing some blue colours. Oh, it's a blue laminate. It's got an adjustable cheek piece. We've got a recoil pad spacer there. I don't know what these are like. I didn't know what gun it was. I knew Sabati was sending me a rifle, but uh, I had no idea which one and what it would be. Looks like you get quite a nice case with this with some reinforced hinges on it as well, but let's just leave that in there. There's the bolt. Here's the instruction book. Here's the rifle. Pop that out of the way. Plunk. Right, so here we go. This is a Sabati Rover 308 Winchester. That does look like a 61 centimetre barrel to me. So let's have a look and start at the front. That is threaded for a moderator. I don't know exactly what that is, but it looks like maybe a 5H24, but we'll confirm that when we get to, when we get the rifle in use or find a moderator for it. Other major features, right, well let's start at the front. We've got an M-lock rail there, so we can put a bipod on it, but it's also got a stud fitted, so we can put a regular bipod on that too, like a Harris. There are QR studs either side, so we can mount that quite easily. And the barrel is fully floating, and it would appear to be very stiff. I wouldn't say that was a super weight barrel, it is in fact, like it says, a varmint barrel. So I quite like that, and the rifle does balance well. We've got grooves here. Well, it's like, it's, like, it's like beaver tail shape, it's got good grip on it, but there's plenty of ventilation there, and there's obviously, there's no barrel contact at all. Uh, I'll strip this down in the full review and have a look to see what the uh, bedding area is like, but on the, obviously here we've got a Picatinny rail there, which looks to be machined part of the action itself, so that one, another one. Bolt releases on the left side, let's have a look at the bolt. So the bolt has got three locking lugs, which will give us a 60 degree lift. It's quite a thick bolt shaft and it's spiral fluted, so you've got minimal contact points here. So that should run pretty smoothly. Given my previous memory of Sabati, been pretty good rifles to be honest, this does seem to have moved on a little bit in the world. That is quite slick and smooth. We've got, I should do a safe dry fire here. Got a dry fire there. Two position safety catch, it does lock the bolt as well. We've got a little bolt handle there, that's not too long. I do like bolt handles, they're easy to get hold of but not excessively long because when they're excessively long they cause torque on the action and uh, you, you don't get necessarily them to run very quickly so that seems quite good. Right, this would appear to be an AICS compatible magazine, but it's got the Sabati logos on it, so they're obviously making it. But AICS compatible means you've got an enormous array of magazine capabilities. It's an aluminium bottom, bottom metal, looks like an aluminium trigger there. We've got a large mag release there. I'm not sure what colours this is available. It's quite interesting in blue, but different, not too tactical, a bit more, a bit more fun and enlivening. So. We shall see about this one. Right, the stock would appear, as I said, we saw a spacer in the box there, so that can go on. We've got sling stud on the bottom there, recoil pad here, and that would appear to be adjustable. And we've got height adjustment there. That's gonna pop out the top completely, which it does. Just pop that back in. 
but that is, it's quite a slim profile cheek piece that, which means you'll be able to get your head on it without it necessarily pushing your jaw and your face off to the side too much. That feels like quite short length of pull at the moment, so that spacer might be going in, but those details will go in the uh, full review. Having a little look, the finish on the on the um, laminate here is very smooth, very sleek. There's no blemishes, no marks or anything. There's a pin through there as well. They often do this on laminate stocks because this is an area where they are sometimes prone to splitting laminate stocks. So pinning them there is not unusual to see. I've got a few stocks of my own, both laminate actually and composite, which have been pinned like that, either to repair damage or to prevent any future damage on various rifles. It's not a big deal, but if you ever see a little brass pin there, that's why, that's what it's for. So the rifle's marked up here. We don't know what the twist rate is or anything like that. We'll do that in the full review. Made in Italy, and it's the Rover Fabrica Dami Sabati, made in Italy. That cheek piece has got a slightly sort of soft touch feel to it, but the rest of it is just quite, you know, it's, it's a nice sort of balanced look with only the silver bolt shaft actually popping out there. That bolt lift, that's getting slicker and smoother already actually, just as part of the, uh, just as part of the initial first impressions look video. But let's say the recoil does feel quite short length of pull, so we might put those spaces in. Right, let's have a little look here. We've got some kind of guarantee certificate there, and we've got an instruction manual. So if I just pop that rifle there, instruction manual looks to be, Italian at the front, let's get through here, right, so Rover 2, family of rifles, maintenance, safety, bolt action rifle, safety device, two position safety, trigger group with set trigger, now is that set trigger? No, that one's not the set trigger, so that might be an optional facility, uh, position safety, the bolt, trigger group, I'm just wondering if that's set, is that a two position or is it a three position safety? It definitely feels like two position to me. I'm just wondering though, if there's a way of opening that bolt without taking the safety off. But again, that could be for the full review. Trigger group is set trigger, removable magazine we've looked at, three lever trigger group. So when I strip it down, take it all apart, we'll see more detail about the trigger. The barrel. Uh, do, 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 do. Is that looks more like an 18 millimeter muzzle and a 20 millimeter muzzle to me? Removing the barrel to remove the barrel from the frame, remove the stock from the frame and first loosening the assembly screws. Blah, 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 blah. I think that could well be just the, you know removing the barrel action rather than removing the barrel. But again, we shall see when we dismantle it, take it all apart. Uh, metal sights, rear sight, don't think that's going to be anything to do with us. So there's nothing really of any great interest in the instruction manual that we don't really know as rifle owners and shooters anyway. So there we go, right, this is a 308. So it's a varmint weight barrel. I've got a selection of ammunition from it, both in lead and in match bullets, hunting bullets, and non-toxic as well, or so I say copper bullets as well, as, uh, as copper and lead core bullets. The scope going on this, well, that's a Picatinny rail on top, so that leaves scope opening, scope options quite broad. Um, I have, and I'm about to do, after I put this away, an unboxing video on a load of scopes, which have been sat here for a few weeks, actually. You're going to like what you see on those videos. Um, I'm going to put one of those on this rifle to shoot it. I've got a Wildcat moderator, which probably should fit up the front. I'll probably put it on a Harris bipod because those are reliable, I like them, but I have got other bipods I could use. Now that at the back end, we've got a butt hook and bag rider on it, and there does appear to be space to keep your hand on the butt hook without it being too close in the bottom of the pistol grip, but we shall see, and that's all for the full review. Right, well, I'll put a link up for the Gunmark TV uh, channel so you can get on with that already and like and subscribe to that channel because that is probably where this, uh, where this rifle will appear. I'll be doing a written review of it as well for Gunmart. Uh, but in the meantime, please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell, dong, and uh, keep track of my channel because it would appear I'm quite busy at the moment. There's a lot of stuff coming in and doing and being done for various channels. I've got a couple of trips lined up shortly. 
I'm going to Sweden for a driven hunt, I'm going to Germany for a driven hunt, and I might even be going to a very interesting optical factory in Germany, which I've just organised today, which will be a, quite an interesting one to keep up to. So uh, yeah, um, keep track of the channel, hope you're enjoying watching it. It's Halloween tonight, so don't do anything silly anybody, and um, please enjoy yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching, bye for now.